Hello and welcome to another F12 programming. Uh, my name is Mike Hewitt. I'm Jacob Brains. And we are going to talk about everything question mark for <laughs> C Sharp and programming. That's a good sign. Right, not programming, C Sharp and like Visual Studio. So Visual Studio started with very few question uh, C Sharp started with very few question marks and over time the language has bloated and now question marks mean a lot of things and I think there's a lot of confusion on what all the different syntactual sugar uses are for the question mark. Yes. So we're just going to roll it all up into one little episode here. And all kind of depends on where it's at and where it's being used, I guess. So let's start with classic, which was the conditional expression, which was all the way back, uh, all the way back to the beta of C sharp. <laughs> it goes back to the beginning of time. So um, we could say something like, uh, I'm going to make a bool here, uh, bool true, false, and we're going to set it equal to true. Um, you could do something like this. You could set some variable equal to true, false, and you could say question mark, and then you could put some value. So let's just say, well, actually, yeah, look at that. that. Look at that, right there. <laughs> so what this says, it's just a shorthand. This is exactly the same as if I wrote this code. If I'm going to write it out real longhand here. True, false equals true. And I'm going to use int y this time. y equals 1, else y equals 0. It's a great little bit of code there. That's, uh, we'll count the 1, 2, 3, 4, Five lines of code, not counting the squiggly braces. And, and at the, if you go down the bottom, y should equal x, correct? Uh, yeah, yeah, because we put the same logic in here. So yes, these so are equal x to should be tr one and y should be one. And if you change line fifteen to false, they both should be x should be zero. And no matter what, they should be the same. Right, because we put we, these are effectively equal bits of code. So it's basically just a short word version. Yes, but this is a lot easier to read. Line eighteen here is it is if you don't get carried away. Um, where things go awry is when you start seeing stuff like this. Somebody puts parentheses here, <laughs> and they start saying, uh, not true, false, 12, colon, 32, yep. and then it's then it starts, it starts breaking down real fast. But for really simple things, where you just want to make it easy to read, if it makes it easier to read, then the question mark is very useful here. You're saying if it's true, it's 1, if it's else, it's false. It's just a real simple... So a Quick question mark with spaces around it. I'm assuming you could put spaces around it. So that is the conditional, yeah, conditional expression. I can type and spell. Uh, what were you going to say? No, that's it. No, that, I was just saying a question mark by itself like that in that format is definitely conditional. Yeah, that's a conditional. Um, and that's been around forever. There's a lot of newer ones. Um, my favorite one is, and it, the SQL guys like this, it's the null coalescing operator. And I'm not going to spell that right, so let's just not even try. But the null coalescing operator uh, allows us to do things with uh, nulls, obviously. So if I say object A equals new object, and I say object B equals null, somewhere down in the code I've got another object and I need to grab object B. But I want to say question, question, A. What that's actually saying, it's another shortcut, just like we wrote up here. And I can write it out longhand again. It's uh, object, I should call it C2, just so there's no confusion. And while you're writing it, basically, uh, uh, while you're writing it, I'll, I'll explain. So B is basically, so what you're doing is you're putting something into C. And uh, it's going to put B, unless B is null, and then it's going to go to A. That's basically uh, what, what it's, yeah, just like that. Yeah, so again, we've got two lines of code here that are pretty close to equal. We've got this one right here. And what it's, it's saying is, I think I'm repeating what, what Mike said here, but we're going to grab B. Unless it's null, and then we're going to go to a. Yep. And uh, that's that's exactly what this long if statement. And this is a common piece of code that you see. So they just wrote a quick way to sh to write it. They don't run any different. There's no difference other right. than just readability. So it's all about readability. Um, the nice thing about this. 
coalescing operator is it's real easy to keep adding more stuff. So um, theoretically, we could go because maybe A might be null and then C might be null. Yeah, yeah you just keep going. Um, and it'll just keep going until it finds something not null, correct? Yeah, and if the end, if it gets all the way to E in this scenario and it's still null, it's going to throw back a null, of course. But um, a lot of times people use it as a default, so I'm gonna, I want this object, and if I can't get this object, give me the default. So right. Why don't you go ahead and put that back up there, the example. Of oh, yeah, there you go. I need to take off there you go. all my little made-up garbage here. Okay, so what is the next one? Uh, what's the next one you see is uh, oh, I'm trying to think uh, the the uh, I'm trying to think of what it's even called. Well, I'll just show you. So if we were going to do string x y z equal to, and this is a great example here, we'll grab c dot to string, which is just a, a standard function that exists on all objects. Um, if we get to this point and C is null, mm -hmm. we're going to get an error because you can't call a method off a variable that is set equal to null. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times what we'll see is we see code like this. If C equals null, Then x y z two equals null. Else x y z two equals c dot two string. So we want to make sure that if it's null, that we don't try to set the variable equal to that two string. Up here, what we can do is we can just put a question mark here, um, and I'll do it with the IntelliSense so you can see it play out. So I think, well, C might be null. I, I'm not for sure. So I'm going to go question mark dot, and then it's going to bring up my two string. So what that's saying is, I'm going to do C dot two string, but I'm going to check to see if C is null. Mm -hmm. And if it is, we're going to effectively stop, and I'm just going to push back null. Um, a couple of neat things with this is we can chain them together. So now I can do two lower dot length or you know whatever it is that I, I need to to stack in here uh, I can I can chain these together and it'll just keep going until one of these returns null or it gets to the end mm -hmm. so if one of these fails and it comes back with a null it's just gonna pass back the null and it's not gonna throw an error that's gonna break your code or that you're gonna have to try and catch and I just dealt with this just this week in that yeah so it's it's everywhere <laughs> and then it's the, the everywhere the other thing is when you uh, I'll make another line down here so we can scroll down a little bit. It actually works with the coalescing operator. So if I want to do this and I think it might come back as a null, I can put question, question, ABC. Mm -hmm. So now it's going to check this to see if it's null. And if it's not, it's going to run to string, which it'll check to see if it's null and run to lower. And if this fails in, because there's a null, mm -hmm. uh, it's going to hit this coalescing operator, which we covered back here at the beginning, and it's going to pop in ABC as like the default if it should fail. Uh, the third place, the fourth, we're at fourth, the fourth place that we see uh, null, the question mark. I think people are fairly common is on value types when we put a question mark on the end of a data type. Uh, D E F. All that means is that that variable can be null, which isn't normal for an int. Most value types can't be null. Yeah, if you just have an int without the question mark, it has to be some number. It has to be 0, 1, or negative, or something. Right, so I could come in here and say def equals null, and that is a valid piece of code. If I take this question mark off, I should, I'm going to get an error here because you can't set an int to a null. So basically, it, you know, depending on how it's being used, those are the four um, main ways uh, a question mark is being used. Yep, I think we pretty well got it covered. Yeah. Thank you for watching that video from F12 Programming. Please remember to like and subscribe. That does so much for us in the ratings. You have no idea. Also, don't forget to comment below. I hope you enjoyed, and good luck coding.